Hello again there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my little shop of horrors. As you can see, today we have something a little different. Winter time's coming, and if you're even halfway intelligent, you can see bad times are coming, if, if not already here. So, in that spirit, you know, of preparedness, I decided to dig this generator out that I traded my brother for a couple years ago. I had one given to me by another brother that he thought had a crank seal leaking in it. And all it was, it turned out that ding -ling, when he changed the oil, he forgot to tighten up the drain plug. And it was a, one of them Harbor Freight jobs, you know, battery start and all that. And the key switch was bad and then yada, yada, yada. And I messed with that thing for a long time. But I got it going, put a new battery in it, you know, wired around the stupid key switch and got it going. Well, this other brother where this thing came from has got a couple of big freezers full of food and he lives way out of town. And they are very subject to power outages in the wintertime, fall, winter, when we get the big wind storms and the ice storms. So being the, the nice guy that I am, I... I took mine up there with the fresh battery and gas and all that, you know, new oil and everything. And I just traded him straight across for this one. I said, there you go. And I'll take this thing. Cause this one's been sitting for years and years and years. And he was happy, you know, and I, I got me another little project. So I'm happy. <laughs> you know how that goes. So this thing's been sitting for a long time and I'm sure the gas in it was bad. I checked it once and it still had some in it and then this last weekend well i i could back up here it, it didn't want to run it, i could get it to run if i put the choke on but it just didn't want to run so i got online and you know good old briggs and stratton they wanted 150 dollars for that and i said yeah okay so as you can see, that one's kind of shiny new. There's the original. I could probably clean that up and go through it. But for less than $20, no joke, Chinesium shipped to my door, I got a new carburetor. All fine and dandy. Uh, I changed the fuel line. As you can see, there's a fill filter on it, all that. And I put all that on there, put some gas in it, and tried to start it, and it ran like crap and I messed with it and I messed with it and I messed with it and I messed with it. I probably had half tank or I mean half a gallon of gas in it. I messed with it long enough that the thing ran out of gas. And of course, Chuck, the old neighbor, he's over here giving me hell the whole time and distracted me. But so undaunted, you know, it didn't matter what I tried to adjust it just didn't want to run with a crap missing and backfiring and farting and so when it run out of gas i went out and i got the exact same gas can with the exact same gas and i brought it over here and i put another half a gallon of gas in it and i pulled on the starter rope and the dang thing started up and ran perfect don't ask me what happened there all I can imagine is the gods of internal combustion have got a serious sense of humor. So anyway, I am messing with it and uh, got it going and stuff and went to shut the fuel off and the thing wouldn't shut off. And there's also here this, I see, got more issues I got to deal with. Whatever this light is for ain't working and the on-off switch don't work either. There's the little fuel valve that I just replaced the uh, you know don't know what's going on so I went to unthread the thing and it don't thread in it's got a it's got a grommet that it pushes up into and this grommet this, the valve is bad itself but trying to get it out I split this grommet open so for another $13 on Amazon Prime and all that happy stuff, they sent me the new valve, new grommet, new fuel line, new fuel filter, yada, yada, yada. Okay, it's all done. I uh, put all that on today, put some new gas in it again, 
after I cleaned the tank out a little bit and it fired right up and it ran fine. But the point of this video here is when you have generators, of course you need to run them once in a while and change the oil religiously, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But what most people don't realize is that here in the United States, everything runs off of 60 hertz, which is 60 cycles of the electricity going back and forth in the in the lines, okay? And this w was a perfect example of that. If you have like modern refrigerators and freezers, you know, laptops, all that, if you plug one of these things in and it's not putting out 60 hertz, you can damage the electronics in it. And the, the quickest and easiest way to check that, so this is one of these kilowatt things. And this was like $15 off of Amazon. And you know, it's got, of course, multiple functions, but if you hit it, the button, what is it? Come on, where are you? Wrong one. If you hit the button three times, down here it will show you what it's putting out for Hertz. And if you check that, you have to have a load on this thing. Because it doesn't matter what Hertz it's putting out when it's just sitting there with no load on it. It's when you put a load on it that you've got to make sure that you have 60 Hertz. So what I did was I, of course, plugged this into the ass end of this thing here, All right? Oh, other way. Wrong hole, wrong hole. How many times have I heard that? Okay, there's that. And then I plugged in ye old milk barn space heater that I got for a dollar several years ago at a garage sale around the corner and I just love this thing. So you plug this into that back here, right? And then you start start your generator up. And then you turn this turn this load on. Turn the heater on. Turn it on max output. And then you while the thing's running, you come over here and push the buttons until you get to the one that says Hertz. And in this case which is the perfect example for this, it was only putting out 55 hertz, which is not enough. So your, your of course, generator is going to be different because this is basically a construction site generator. But you need to find the throttle adjustment on your generator. And in my case, it's right here. You turn this in and it speeds the engine up so you get a wrench and sit here with this hot hot exhaust blowing on your arm while you're messing with it and you crank that in and increase the speed the whole time keeping an eye on this unit back here until you get to 60 hertz that's with a load on it after that you're good to go then you can run the modern equipment and laptops and things and not burn them up because it's got the wrong cycle. Now, you know, I don't know if you notice you know, the floor is wet because I knocked over a jug full of friggin' antifreeze and I had to wash that out. And I you know, also noticed that uh, Uncle Phil likes to live dangerously. I don't have this thing grounded to nothing, but either way, and this is just for informational purposes anyway, so um, might be something you definitely want to check before the snow flies. I That's the reason I'm out here messing with this thing, because we do get power outages in the, in the late fall and, and winter. We get huge windstorms around here, knock trees down and the trees land on the power lines and then everybody's out of power. And then once in a while we get an ice storm, but normally it's the wind that does it. So there you go. There's your little tip of the day. 
appreciate you swinging by, taking an interest in what I got going on here, and just to shock you and give you something to scare the children with. There's your little a face to go with the voice and the name. Sorry, you know, I ain't real pretty. Blame my mother.